Hi everybody, Caleb Allman here. Allman Landscape based in Fairfield County, Ohio, beautiful southeastern Ohio. Uh, we're a design build firm down there. We're up in Novi, Michigan. We just got a, uh, just leaving a fun weekend with Brian and Liz Fullerton here. And uh, there's a retaining wall outside their development. I'm gonna talk about that here for a minute. It's raining like crazy at the moment. So I'm going to talk about that in a truck for a second, but we're gonna go outside and take a look at it. Here we go. So there's a, a relatively newly constructed retaining wall. I want to show you a few things about this. We've got the erosion control mat here, the straw blanket, straw netting. We like using this stuff a lot. The netting is arguably, it's arguable how just how biodegradable that is over what time. But generally 12 months, that stuff will go away. What I mainly want to talk about is the grading behind this retaining wall and these drains at, at the elevation they're at. Um, I like seeing that this retaining wall has uh, some embedded courses that's required by National Concrete Masonry uh, Association standards in CMA. Go to ncma.org for some uh, great specs on retaining walls, as well as the Hardscape Academy where we have training videos on how to build these things. Um, you always want a minimum of one course embedded or 10% of the total wall height. But again, one course minimum buried. So I like seeing that that's done. Uh, behind these things, you always want to make sure that the water is managed, that it's shedding and pushing uh, you know, ideally away from the back of the wall and collecting or running around the back side of the wall. Out here, the water's just kind of setting, the grading sit kind of flat, and this is like pre, pre finished grade or whatever. So I'm guessing uh, when they finish this lot, look at the beautiful car. Nice. Oh, even manual transmission. Cool. But, um, you know, this grading, we want to see this grading so it's pushing water away from the back of the wall. There is, the best I can tell, you can see all this this uh, clean stone here as backfill for drainage. Something I, I question is the elevation of these drains, which are required by NCMA standards every 40 feet for a daylight, which looks pretty close as to where they're at. Um, these drains really need to be at the lowest point of the wall. So if this were to actually fill up with water, if this is all clean stone behind here, you know, the wall's gonna have to fill up with water if it's not clean stone behind here. The wall's, the wall's gonna have to fill up with water. Let me start that over again. If this is all clean stone behind the wall and the pipe is here, this thing in theory is gonna have to fill up to here with water before it drains out the, the, the outflow pipe. Um, now it's gonna weep out the front and all that kind of stuff. You see some crazy stuff on the internet of uh, retaining walls uh, with water just blowing through them. The number one enemy of retaining walls is water and you need to manage the water. It's all about managing the water. All these kind of construction projects is about managing water. Uh, the stagnant or the static weight rather of the water behind here and then you even get freeze thaw expansion can be really troublesome and ultimately uh, you know dire consequences to the retaining wall so one of the things that may have been happened the grade plan may have called for something different and the finished grade be actually up at this height you know instead of down here uh, that'd be a lot more embedment but the embedment can also be dictated by the actual conditions on site as far as uh, what the intention of this retaining wall to do is, is it gonna hold up live uh, live traffic, live load, like a vehicle or a bunch of pedestrians? Is it gonna be static load, like a building or a structure or whatever the case may be? So a lot of that's gonna dictate how much embedment there is. Uh, also, as far as toe slope goes, like this slope here is called the toe slope. So uh, generally the more or steeper toe slope you've got, the deeper that wall needs to be embedded into the ground. So it is transferring load deeper into the hillside and doesn't just slide out like my foot on top of that slope you know my foot might slide right so the wall being embedded deeper into the hill is what's going to allow that thing to hold back the mass of earth behind it so this is some quick retaining wall crash course stuff uh, you can find more information in our two and a half hour long training course at the hardscapeacademy.com about how to build these things properly um, you know when to use geogrid not how much because we can't talk about that because of legal reasons but how to install geogrid based on the engineered plans that you would uh, receive on such projects. So um, that's that. I hope the lighting's half decent. That is, again, on how to install a retaining wall and some basic points on retaining walls there. Uh, by myself, Caleb Allman. I'm not